What's up, Ozones? Welcome to the Ozone, and welcome to some FNAF movie news. I did not think that this would come, uh, like, now, but we do have FNAF movie news, so uh, I was actually going to talk about this a little bit ago because I didn't really mention it at all, ever. Um, but Jason Blum, the, um, what is it, owner? Basically, Jason Blum from Blumhouse Studios uh, said on Twitter uh, some new information about the FNAF movie. So apparently, they will begin recording the FNAF movie in February of 2023. That is pretty big. That is very soon, actually. Um, it is less than half a year away, of course. And uh, February 2023, could that mean that the film will come out in 2023? I am not so sure about that. I, I feel like it's going to be more early 2024, but I think 2023 is definitely possible if they film in early 2023. Of course, filming will take a few months, uh, and then I, I would say uh, editing would probably take another like big handful of months. I, I would say that they can get it done in 2023. I'm just not sure if they are going to say, okay, we're going to get this out on Halloween, we're going to rush all of it, or if they are going to make sure that the quality is there rather than um, getting it out on time. But that's very good news. There is also a new director, Emma Tammy. Uh, and apparently she is a very good director. I've heard good things about her, so that is very good. Jim Henson's are making the animatronics still, which is very, very cool. We saw that in an image a little while ago now, so that's very exciting. Their animatronics are very realistic and very cool, so I'm excited to see them on the big screen. And of course, we have the big news that Scott Cawthon is... Uh, in charge of the script, basically, is is part of the script writing. So we are going to have more original Scott Cawthon story content, which is amazing. I think that he is very good at creating a story. I'm not sure if he's very good at storytelling, uh, especially in the games. Um, but yeah, I, I think I'm very excited that Scott Cawthon has a big hand in this. Um, that's what we've always wanted, really. So that's a lot of the kind of old news now. I think everybody knows about that. But we do have some new sort of information. So this is a really weird situation, right? So there was a, a, a website. It was called Geek Vibes Nation. And they shared some of the casting uh, for the FNAF movie. However... We didn't know if this was like a, a, a leak, like a, a true leak, or if it was fake. Um, obviously, there was no kind of like source that was attached to it. We didn't know if it was completely reliable or not. Since then, there was another website called Production Weekly, which is a reputable source, which means like it, it is a source that we are able to use. It is completely reliable. And they have said the exact same things on the filming details. So that is very, very exciting. So here is what they said on the filming details. They said it would happen on the 1st of February. So it's much earlier February than late February, which is good. Uh, and it would be filmed in Louisiana. I have no idea where that is. <laughs> I know it's in America, obviously. I'm just not American, so I don't know if it's northwest, south or east. That was a really weird way of... I did it backwards. So here is the other information that we have. And this is going to kind of blow your mind but also it's gonna be a bit weird. Like I'm still getting used to it, but I don't know. And also this, like a lot of this could be false information. Like this doesn't have to be the actual information, right? Because it kind of seems a little bit on the nose. And if I'm being honest, I'm still reluctant to fully believe in all of this because there are a lot of grammar mistakes in these paragraphs. And these errors are are stupid, like they are ridiculous and it makes it more and more unreliable. So I would be careful about what you believe. Uh, somehow it's always FNAF, right? It's always FNAF where you have to be careful with everything because there's always mistakes in the original sources. But here we go. So we have three characters that we are introduced to and this, again, this is going to like be confusing. So we have the male lead, Mike. It was pretty obvious we were going to get Mike as the male lead. And he's in his mid-twenties to early thirties. Sounds about right. Sounds connected to the games, yeah, I would say. Uh, especially if this is going to take place kind of in the FNAF 1 location. Uh, I would say like 1993. He would be in his in his twenties. Well, 
Yeah, he would. Yeah, he would be on, in his twenties or thirties, I would say. So that's pretty good. His character development lends to some plot points from the movie. Riddled with guilt over a tragedy in his past and now struggling to take take care of his younger sister on his own, Mike is a, is low on options when he lands a new job to pay the bills. The night security guard at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Uh, Mike is vulnerable with a tough exterior, though he means well, his obsession with digging for truth may have potentially disastrous consequences. That's interesting. That's very interesting. So, things that we learn from this. First of all, there was a tragedy in the past that Mike was responsible for. Yeah, riddled with guilt. So, Mike was responsible for a tragedy in the past, where we heard that before, the Bite of 83, of course. So it seems like the Bite of 83 is going to be canon to the the film universe, the, the FNAF CU, the cinematic universe. It seems like uh, the Bite of 83 or something like that is going to be canon to this universe. Second thing to take from this is that he has a younger sister, Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Third thing, he lands a new job, he is the head security, or not the head security guard, the night security guard for Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria, not pizza, but still, it's kind of the same. Uh, and then finally, uh, he's digging for the truth, so we, we never really completely understand Mike's kind of, uh, what, like, motive in the original FNAF games. Like, it's understood in kind of, like, sister location, and it's understood in FNAF 3, definitely. But uh, in FNAF 1 and 2 especially, like, we don't really know why he's working as a night guard. I guess he's trying to track Afton or something, not too sure. But uh, yeah, that's that's kind of weird. So we may be getting kind of like lore behind Mike. If this is canon to the game's universe. Because here's the thing, the female lead is named Abby and she is 10 years old. I bet you can guess who Abby is, or I bet you can't. Um, Mike's younger sister, Abby, is inquisitive and brave. With a creative mind and keen intuition, a bit of a loner who keeps her thoughts and feelings close to her chest. She expresses herself primarily through drawings. Growing up without her parents, being raised by her unreliable father, uh, by her unreliable brother, sorry, uh, Abby has learned to defend for herself. That said, she is still very much a child, emotionally vulnerable, full of imagination, and not without the normal outbursts of a 10-year-old. Okay, so we've learned that Mike's sister is, is not Elizabeth. It's, it's Abby. Abby. So, as a lot of people have pointed out uh, in the FNAF community, Abby is actually derived from the name Elizabeth, which is cool, okay? brilliant like abby is derived from elizabeth that doesn't mean that abby is a shortened version of elizabeth liz is a shortened version of elizabeth abby isn't it is just derived from elizabeth so i guess you could say there is a connection but does that necessarily mean that this is the elizabeth from the games i have absolutely no idea but i would probably lean more on the no side if that's so, that would mean that the movie would take place outside of the game's universe, which I think would probably happen anyway. And that does kind of suck because naturally we want lore for the games. We want to be able to fill in all the blanks by literally seeing the blanks, right? So that's that's kind of it kind of sucks if it is out of the universe, but I don't think it will it will make it kind of like a, a worse movie. Uh, I, I do have hope for this, even though I'm not so sure about the, the name Abby. As I said before, this seems to be somewhat reliable, but the names don't necessarily have to be the names. They could just be kind of like using, um, what's it called? Like they could be using uh, false names for now, uh, placeholders, um, just until we have more news about the movie. Editor Ozone here. I would just like to mention, I forgot to say something. Abby is actually an anagram of, of baby. So, so that's fun. But uh, yeah, they, they really, they, they go quite a distance to, to kind of uh, talk about the fact that she is very imaginative and creative and likes to draw. Uh, I don't know what's really going on with Abby. 
But there is something, um, like, she is a female lead as well. Like, these two are going to be paired together for, like, the whole movie, I would assume. So, that's kind of weird. That is very kind of disconnected from the games as well. Uh, but very interesting nevertheless. And finally, we have our final character, which uh, is, like, right on the nose, okay? It's, it's just right there. Uh, it's not William Afton. That would have been cool, though. We have female supporting lead Vanessa in her 20s. Vanessa is a police officer who shows up during one of Mike's work shifts. While leading with a bright and sunny disposition, Vanessa has, uh, has a keen understanding of the dark history and inner workings of the restaurant. Not wanting to reveal too much of what she may know, she works uh, to, to help Mike survive the night. So it seems like we're going to have these three characters uh, as kind of leads. Um, so yeah, I, I honestly... Why, why the name Vanessa? That's just going to be very confusing. I know Scott likes to confuse us in the books already because there is, I'm pretty sure there's like five mics in the Fives by Frights and none of them really connect very well to the game's mics. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. Uh, if this is what the movie is, then fair enough. Um, but, uh... It's kind of weird that the sister is named Abby and not Elizabeth. So, um, what do you guys think in the comments below? Uh, let me know, and uh, I will cover more FNAF movie news when it comes out. But thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you later. Goodbye.